Yeah, the point here being, like, the strength boys are low. Mm-hmm. There's a legendary axe. Are these in some capacity connected? Hmm. Hmm. Let's think about it. So, the legendary is strong enough. You yeah. may, not like the effect. Obviously, the effect has a problem as well. But it's genuinely a strong, like, actual... Um, it's a strong, strong legendary, strong item, big stats, big, like, passive stuff. Unless you're a Frosty K. Do you know what the problem with Frosty K is? The dot that it does is spread by AoE stuff. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, so if you're an Unholy DK, you can drop your Death in the K and then your Cleaved attacks will spread it. For Frosty K, Obliterate Cleaves do not spread it. The only way to spread it is to take Frost Scythe, the talent which fucking sucks and hasn't been used all expansion. So, a little bit, a little bit scuffed. A little bit scuffed in a bunch of ways. Also, but, like, cleave fights, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, there. here's the problem of why we're saying, it, balance are fun. If you don't want legendary OP, don't do legendaries. They're supposed to be OP. And yeah, that's the point. After. So, is it supposed to be balanced? Or is it supposed to have legendaries? What's the point of a legendary if it's balanced? And that's where we get to. What's the what's what's the point? Why is getting far? And this is the same with um, oh, hiding blast can spread it now. Oh, they they fixed that. Sweet, cool. Um, there was something else. There was uh, it's like yeah, you need uh, you need to get the axe to be competitive, but the axe is a rare drop. I wish. That Do you I deserve could to be competitive? Have a button. They just, mm. I press the button and like, there's just a massive scream of, what the God comp? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, it's a legendary. It's got to be overpowered, of course. That's the whole point. And I guess like the way that they gate it is so that it's not a, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, magically. Uh, okay. It, it's like rare mm -hmm. uh, with increasing chance over time. So it's like they're trying to not ruin progression and you know, they're trying to at least be wise to that. So why not let it just be a bit busted? But then you got the problem of the it's integrity of the Mythic Plus season and the integrity of, you know, this, that and everything. People get lucky and then the game's not balanced anymore. Yep. Now the problem is you've designed, uh, you've de designed it so that some of those people get lucky and therefore super powerful. And then that's not fair. So this, like, it is a challenge because the other way of doing it is Shadowlands legendaries where we all have one. And, and the no thing one with gives Shadowlands, shit. The thing with Shadowlands legendaries is some of the effects could be cool and you could maybe select which effects you wanted in your character. Hmm. Realistically, you didn't. You just <laughs> used the best ones. Um, but, you know, at least that was like a, a sort of a gameplay customization thing. Whereas this is like, nope, it's a legendary. It's rare. So... Probably, yeah, probably should make it powerful. But, like, way back in the day, this wouldn't really have been an issue because people just didn't see the game like that. Yeah, because it wasn't... Uh, we weren't in such an informationally complete environment. And then that brings now. you right back to balance their fun. Yeah. Because balance is going to be all about pointing out problems. But not fun is also a problem. Is it worth letting one person feel lucky if everyone else feels hard done by? Mm. And that's fundamentally, like, is it... Are you supposed to be kind of fair? Or is it supposed to not be fair? Because not being fair... It, it is literally the, like... What's the fucking Fairly Odd Parents episode where everyone's grey? Everyone's like a grey blob because everyone wanted to be the same. Or do we wish for everyone to be the same and like for... Whatever the... I can't remember exactly the context. No, Don't do that. Yeah, but it was one of those. And it's like... So what is the... What is the... The correct answer here? And this is, like, I'm not going to suggest one or the other, because I think it is an interesting problem, or I think they should maybe... Because even the Evoker Legendary, was it was cool as hell, but it had the same problem, where people were complaining about not getting it because they mm -hmm. were behind. They were behind. So I don't really know what to... <laughs> I'd argue that having someone's par decided by RNG in a drop table is the ultimate form of fairness. Oh yeah, <laughs> I see what you mean. It's like, if every if everything's decided by a dice roll, then it's fair. Yep. It's fair in the grand scheme of things. And not, but yeah. not, not to the person who rolls the one. 
That's the that's the thing there. There's fair for everyone and feels fair. And feels fair is the important one. Because this probably is fair in the grand scheme. But Look people don't feel that way. Yeah. You can get Shadowmorn. You have to collect these things, do that, blah, blah, blah. You get Shadowmorn. Yeah. Is is that how we should do it? Or is it not how we should do it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, I suppose, should we talk? Yeah, we may as well talk about acquisition then. So <laughs> you get lesser and greater embers of Feralath. Basically, they're in your inventory. And the more you have, the more bad luck protection you have. But of course, none of this is trackable or anything. So it's one of those things where you could have loads of these and you having loads of these in your bag would almost make uh, not getting the item feel worse. Yeah, and but, there's no yeah. transparency in the system, and then that breeds anxiety because then people are like, "Well, I've be, I've got loads of greater embers of Freyleth, and I still haven't got it. Is it broken in my character?" They start to worry. They make customer support tickets. They talk in forums. That's oh, that's challenging. It's the XCOM ninety nine percent miss. Like it is. Yeah, if you've got a couple of these, you're starting to feel like your misses are ninety nine percent misses, and you go, "What do you mean? That's not fair." I am biased towards probability because I'm a human and that's how brains work and this doesn't feel right to me. Even though you could, you know, you could roll a dice. Like if you have a, if you have a dice and you roll a one a hundred times, you're going to go, well, that's bullshit. (laughs) But also in probabilities are independent to deal with it. But it doesn't feel right because I mean, there the is biases. a probability you could refract through the door. <laughs> it's just so improbable; it's not going to happen. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, that. Like, exactly I mean, that. there you go. We're in this situation where I actually I do empathize with Blizzard because yeah. they have a real challenge here. Mm. Um, and you know, actually, even on the whole thing of like, is it balanced or is it fun? I remember using the Chalamain trinket from time rifts and whatever i was using on it wasn't particularly good for mm. but you know why i liked it it's whenever cool. i was just walking about the world i had a absolutely like berserk ape mode yeah you go bah, 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 bah. Yeah. and then the thing dies mm-hmm. do i care though that in a fight via sim is not the best dps ever no because my character has the i kill now button big into the beyond god i miss that so much I fun. love that trinket to pieces. Just, I'm going to make this mob disappear. So fun. I'm going to, I don't know, redirect the orbit of a star into yeah. you. <laughs> like, even, like that's a cool part of it, but even the gameplay experience of, yeah. it comes up and the boss is on 10% and you're like, I'm going to make that boss go to 5%. And still you're like, <laughs> yeah, you have um, You have your corruption gear and mm. like you just, you know, you, you tickle a mob and instantly <laughs> move. Yeah. Uh, so mm. I guess with Fairlath, yeah. Wh- what do they do? Because if they give everybody who could use a Feralath a pathway to definitely have a Feralath, there'll be a lot of Feralaths. Now, in that case, what does legendary mean? Does it mean probability? No. Uh, does it mean power? No, because no. you're because you're tuned down to make up for it. But could it mean a little bit of power and also a legendary experience that feels special, unique, tailored, high value? You know, that's one way of making something worthy of the name legendary. This is another way of making it worthy of the name legendary. Quest line so appearance. What do you want to do? Quest line appearance and out of combat benefit. Yeah. Or a usability and combat benefit. So not pure damage, but as an example, it has a gap closure attached to it. Yeah. Imagine you had a blink dagger. And you just tapped it and it took you to your target. If you do that, then PvP won't even be Jules with Van Rookie. It'll just be him playing X's and O's with himself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no it, one left. Yeah, that. it doesn't need to be super strong. And a blink dagger is a pretty bad example. But like the kind of thing where you have a button that is different that than just pure extra damage. Mm. You can still have it be strong. Still have it be like Abyss. But you want to like have the quest line, have the appearance, feel a little bit special, and then actually like properly um blink dagger feels pretty good because you can tell like that's pretty sweet yeah the legion warrior boots that give you extra leaps that's a good example there were a couple of legendary effects that were utility oriented that were really cool so Mm. maybe a actual blizzard even had a real interesting time balancing those i've completely forgotten what it was it was one of the trinkets and uh, i think oh Oh, the days of, of late 2016. As we're tr- you, you would get your first, like, legendary that you're, you know, very likely to get, and it would be, a, like, a not good one. And then some people would literally make a new character. Yeah, I... So much of my good experience playing Legion may have been because I got my two best legendaries, 
after one after another. Screw you, dude. Yeah. Oh man, that is so messed up. <laughs> yeah. That's a good uh, good idea, Eric. Once again, legendaries could be one of the power creep things used in nerf raids could be group group buff too. That would be a cool idea if it's literally a group buff thing. Where that you, way, you grab a legendary yeah. and it's say they intentionally give it the same stats as your otherwise best weapon, but they make it orange and give it a group benefit, be that a buff of some sort. Or even like a man, imagine like while in the war within raid one area, out of combat movement speed is increased by 200%. I'd even love to see smaller things like that happen. Or you could have it as a proper like, you know, when fighting thing, your group gets X percent extra damage. Mm. Or better yet, better yet, I've got it. I've got it. You specifically, it, it has a very specific purpose, a very specific on use that helps solve or nullify a mechanic. But it drops from that boss. Mm. Yeah. Now, now, having the difficulty be here would be weird because if you get, like, say, a Farak, say, say the Farak axe immediately consumed all of the orbs in the intermission and like they just nullify that mechanic entirely to reduce your stress and give people more damage there that would be cool but if you got it on normal then you go abuse it on mythic if you follow mm. but i think that will be a pretty good idea as well there's a couple of downsides to it obviously but at the same time you go okay well you've got the you've got the axe or you've got there wouldn't be an axe you've got the staff that creates a shield that nullifies this cast as opposed to having to do something else to do it yeah, that would be that might be interesting. Just a thought. So, just a thinky. I mean, so big picture here. Uh, there's so much potential in this design space, mm. and I'd like I'd make it clear I do appreciate Blizzard trying to do this in this expansion. Definitely, I know that like neither have been perfect in the in the mind of many players. Like I get that. I'm glad that they're trying. I hope they keep on trying. I think the game is better if we take bets like this. So and your answer uh, is basically closer to fun, then? Obviously, it's a game. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... It's he, a game! Yeah, but I mean, obviously, there's a question. And I enjoy... Look, A it, lot of people would rather have balance. Yeah, but... It's that challenging thing of, you know, doing it for... I remember whenever, uh, it was Legion, right? Legion PvP. And what they did was normalized stats where mm. you had a stat template in PvP and the better your gear was, it would essentially be a positive multiplier yeah. on the stats, but it was all quite normalized. And for a lot of people, and I think at the time I was even like, look at this, it'll be balanced. And then a lot of people then, you know, because you look at this at a design stage, you're like, ah, yes, 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 I see. This solves all those problems. And when a new person gets into PvP, maybe they won't be as destroyed now because yada, yada, yada. The then people, when they start playing the game, they start realizing, like, I can't smash people. Hmm. And then you look at <laughs> everything going on with skill-based matchmaking in uh, FPS games, where sometimes what people want is just go into a lobby, random lobby. Who knows what you'll get, and you'll... If you're that good, you'll stomp everyone or whatever. But the thing that happens then is as you get better and better at a game, the skill-based matchmaking continues to match you with other people of a similar skill level to you. So in a way, it's like, I have got better, and so is my opponent. So I'm pro skill-based matchmaking, by the way. I am not pro skill-based matchmaking that is like this tight. Yeah. If it's so tight that it just feels like you're getting the same experience like again and again and again forever, um, I think that ends up being the sort of thing that a lot of people complain about. Uh, if there's no skill-based matchmaking, then yeah, the YouTubers who play a lot of, you know, whatever Call of Duty game and just go and, you know, kill 40 people, get a nuke at the end, all the called stuff, uh, sure, they'll have fun, but a lot of people probably won't. Uh, like yeah, Halo Three, amazing game. Had skill based matchmaking, but it's it's just about like how it's done. So that that's another uh, bit of discourse that's like going on in gaming. Another one then, uh, StarCraft Two. Of course, this is relevant with uh, Stormgate. With Stormgate having a beta available during Steam Next Fest in early February. Big. Mm -hmm. So in StarCraft Two, everyone wants real you know real good balance one v one. 
And for so many, that is like the, you know, the Halo product, the pinnacle of the game. But actually, by play patterns, what do a lot of people want to do? Play, play co-op commanders and go into the arcade and do dumb shit. Because it's fun. So, uh, I don't want to say there's a balance between the two, because that would be a bit trite. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely something to think about. Certainly, uh, it's that problem with skill-based matchmaking is like everyone's right in their own perspective. Because... Hmm more balance for so many more people is more fun because it means they get to play the thing that they enjoy instead of feeling like they're being railroaded into something. And then if you tie that to an overpowered legendary that has, uh, you know, messy acquisition, then that's going to ruin... Yeah, that's not fun at all. Even though for the person who is like, oh, wow, I randomly got an overpowered legendary. Look at me, I'm God now. It's fun for them. So, oh man, it's such a damned if you do, damned if you don't. And that's exactly why I thought it was interesting to talk about. Yeah. Because Blizzard have a literal, there's no right answer here. I would say go as spectacle, cool factor, experiential, and what you were saying about sort of non-throughput positives. Mm. Uh, do that, and I think you'll be in a better... Maybe... Ah, what, what was it? Was it... It was... Um, oh my God, I can't believe I forget it's fucking... Uh, Medivh's staff that could open a portal to Kara. Oh, yeah. That. Huh. Stuff like that. Stuff like that would be, would be fun, I think. Why can't I remember his name? Uh, Atish. Atish. That's it. Yes, correct. Yeah. Great staff of the Guardian. Yeah, that <laughs> would be cool. Great staff. It's a, it's a, it's a little... Yeah. It's a, it's a, little, a, it's a great yeah. space staff. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's it. That's it.